There we go. That's better. I just like knowing, uh, you know, when I've clicked on a button or something. Anyway, let's read this how the, this uh, political situation in our government. <clears throat> Prime Minister King's government, now with a comfortable majority after the defeat of R.B. Bennett's Conservative Party, uh, Con William Lloyd Mackenzie King was a liberal, by the way, and his British backer. Uh, and his British backers is uh, and his British backers is now all but secure. George the Fifth is growing steadily worse in health, and despite his sickness, continues to oppose the moderating influence of the Prime Minister on Canadian politics. Senile and, obsess and obsessed with reclaiming the empire, King George lends credibility to the British exiles who now sit in the Canadian House of Lords, formerly known as the Senate before the Syndicist Revolt whose presence in the upper house threatens to endanger the prime minister's legislative program. While Canada has grown strongly by the influence of the influx of expertise, capital, and technology, it remains an uncertain player on the world stage. The next few years of King's government will decisively shape the country's future. How terribly exciting. Man, we need money. Oh no, King George is dead! Ever since the Radical Union's victory in Britain, King George has been plagued by illness and his health has been failing. While hidden from the public view, yesterday, or well, the public has been unaware, yesterday at 11.55 p.m., King George died of a bout of fever. Oh no. That is sad. There now, Edward VII is our head of state. Go team. There we go. Uh, with his father dead, Prince Ed uh, Edward, Prince of Wales, has been coronated King Emperor of the British Empire. The two large factions within Canadian political sphere have co uh, have coalesced. One led by the Prime Minister, seeking to develop and refine Canada's industrial strength to harvest its resources over foreign policy. But the other led by R.B. Bennett and his supporters in the British uh, diaspora who wish to mobilize the Canadian economy and launch an invasion of the Union of Britain in the near future, even if it means accelerating arms productions at the expense of civil liberties. The Prince of Wales is popular with both French and English Canada. His views may very well sway the opinions of others. He could prove to be valuable in the arguments um, of either group, depending on how they make their case. So I can side with Bennett and the Exiles, and what will that do? That'll move us towards the political right, uh, and us more towards authoritarian, Listen to the Canadian government. Uh, move towards democratic. Prince listens to the prime minister. Um, move towards a uh, hawk lobby, and the prince doesn't say shit. Uh, I want to listen to Bennett and the exiles because I want to make an invasion of, we'll take back Britain at some point. There we go. Oh, good. That's what we need. Yeah, Prime Minister William Loin Mackenzie's King, Mackenzie King's purge of the army, coronation of the Prince of the People. Ooh, yay! Um, okay. Well, we don't need any more reinforcements, or almost none. There we go. Oh, the radio address. The king has spoken, and the nation the nation is electrified from it. From Vancouver to St. John, from Toronto to the Arctic, Canadians everywhere are buzz with excitement after hearing the charismatic and forceful speech denouncing syndicism, and the king's pledge to finish the war his father began and reclaim Britain. Canadians were ne were warned never to trust the Union of Britain or the insidious syndicist allies. Oh no. War, war between Germany and Portugal. I wonder who's going to win. Spoiler alert, it's not Portugal. Oh, well, all our upgrades are done as well. So we'll just focus in on stockpiling money and supplies for a little bit. 
and just see how things in the world play out as time goes on. I thought... Oh, oh we are allied. It's like, why can't I see what's going on here? Then I realized I could. Our mighty, uh, you know, we really hold a lot of sway in the world. Old ships are useless. What should we do? Send them to Delhi. Send them. Uh, I'll send them to Delhi because they're actually in a war. So there we go. So yeah, we control all the world. Third of India, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and a bunch of Car oh oh, and part of Africa and a bunch of Caribbean islands. What what happens if we purge the army? Yeah, we're not gonna purge the army. Admiral, uh, who's its last request? Oh, I'll just keep him in office. I don't want too much dissension. The British Royal Command Staff. The year was to begin his effort to retake England and throw the socialists into the sea. He reinstated that the Royal Command Staff I'm sorry, he insisted that the Royal Command Staff would be the right course. Many Canadians believe that losing any control of the military would be an affront to Canadian sovereignty. Uh, the King is right. We need to work with the British. We'll figure out our, our way. We'll be okay. Canada is a... Oh, Greece is annexed. What state? Oh, Crete. Good job, Greece. I'm sure it was a tough battle. So the world is, you know, right now in some sort of relative state of stability. However, that will change, and that will change very quickly. Oh, good. So, new infantry divisions are ready to go. Let's also upgrade our... Now, let's upgrade our artillery, because artillery is important to me. I like beefing up my infantry with artillery divisions. Okay. We're still... This guy still isn't done. And now we got to, of course. So I'm not going to reveal what exactly my plan is going to be, because that would involve some spoilers. Second Quebec City Corps. Arming the nation, the King's Ascension marks the beginning of a new era. The ad hoc and difficult task of strengthening, strengthening Canadian industry, integrating the Royal Navy, and finding a place for the hundreds and thousands of British exiles who've been trying uh, have have been a trying test for Canada. We have survived the initial storm. We are stronger now, but we must refine our strength. So we are equal to that to the great so we're equal to that of the great powers. The Prime Minister and his government therefore are putting together a comprehensive security and military bill that will address the various inter national interests of Canada. The legislation is known as Bill C seven. Uh we'll make the bill a bipartisan effort, because I believe in bipartisanism. Alright. Bill C-7, The Future of Canada's Industry. When the Great War began, the British Prime Minister, Herbert uh, Asquith, said that industry would, be preceded as, or industry would be preceded as business as usual. Ensuring the shell crisis 
and the difficulty found equipping the British Army has shown us that if another war were to start, we would need a mobilized war economy. However, the businessmen aren't willing to invest in such specialized facilities, such as heavy bomber factories, so that such an economy would require. Some conservative MPs are proposing that part of the security bill include a provision to immediately nationalize such key war industries. Wow, conservatives pushing for nationalization? That's weird. Anyway, while this wouldn't increase the size of our industrial capacity, it would cut down on a lot of red tape. C.D. Uh, C. Howe, the Minister of Munitions, argues that government subsidies would create some such some such of these uh, would create such industries that entrepreneurs would lease at very preferable rates and provide labor which would increase the number of factories, but limit their efficiency by working within the private sector. Some MPs are arguing for a compromise where the government would nationalize and subsidize these industries that would require a great deal of sophistication while subsidizing the basic ones we already have in place. Side with the Tories, we have more industrial efficiency. I am going to side with Mr. Howe, because I want more factories, which is what uh, his proposal would do. See, there we go. We're now up to 91 industrial capacity. Reorganizing the army. When the revolution succeeded in Britain, it forced Canada to become a senior military member of the empire. Well, the, while Canada was able to seize the Caribbean, we were unable to seize the rest of the empire and its territory. Many regard this as a result of a small army at the time, and many would like to resurrect the conscription bill. However, Prime Minister, the Prime Minister is a liberal in the more mold of Sir, Wil uh, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, and is not will not uh, lightly allow such a divisive law to be... Uh, promulgated without intense debate. The conservatives want universal description, while the progressives within the Liberal Party have threatened to leave government if, the, if it goes ahead with conscription, because it is deeply unpo unpopular, especially in Quebec. The Prime Minister has declared conscription if necessary, but not necessarily conscription. See, there you go, the kind of stuff I was talking about, how he would make these vague statements and never really take sides in these really important debates. Many uh, us are taking. Many are taking this as a sign that he's working to build a consensus. Conscript the Tories made a convincing army. National descent is increased by five. Conscript every able-bodied man. Uh, into the B class. Well, I'm going to go with the, the conservatives. Man, I am... Oh no! Oh no! Progressives are leaving the government. The spineless kowtowing to the liberal uh, of the Liberal Party to the British conservatives has caused more left-wing elements of the Liberal Party to reform to the progressive uh, uh, to reform to a progressive party. The Prime Minister still has a majority, but it is razor thin. Okay, so much for what I said about national dissension. Um... What was the button? I know there was a button that I could press where it would like uh, automatically lock on how much I needed it to be. Damn it, I can't remember what that was. Oh well. Um, but yeah. So now we're at 15% dissension because I instituted conscription because I know we're going to need a lot of manpower for our coming wars of domination. But, uh, so that's gonna, you know, decrease our industrial capacity for now, but it will be beneficial in the future because we'll have more manpower and we'll have it faster and we'll be able to kick the crap out of uh, certain nations. Alright, domestic security. Canada has been able to avoid the bitter war that engulfed Britain after the Great War, but the conflict between Anglo-Canadians and British exiles is growing. This has led to the department of uh, led to the development of several groups calling for the reproachment of the Union of Britain. 
the Tories want to crack down on these groups and have proposed that a new parliamentary committee be formed with executive power over the Royal Canadian Mounted Police as a new civilian intelligence agency with Conservative, R, uh, Conservative MP Robert Mani uh, Mignon as the chairman. Such a committee would be the first of its kind in Canada and would cut back on many civil liberties and union rights. Ernest uh, Lapontier, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the Solicitor General, has suggested some of these uh, symb symbolic laws be passed, uh, bringing some of the Tories on side, and that a weaker committee be created with Sir Louis Laurent as its chairman. While the progressives are adamant and no infringing of their civil rights, however, it is clear Canada must reorganize and streamline its overly bureaucratic security forces. Alright, what do I want? Something that won't... Uh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna side with the progressives on this one so I don't lose my majority in Parliament. Okay, well, dissension is growing in Canada. Apparently, they're pissed off. Or my Canadian, my fellow Canadians are pissed off. Oh, sweet. I didn't know we get a new uh, industrial. Who's it? All right. Wait, 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 wait. The bill is killed in the House of Lords after I worked so hard in crafting it. The bill is now being examined by the House of Lords. The government is doing all it can to make it pass. Offering rewards and bargaining with individual members in exchange for a favorable vote. Oh, well. <laughs> Fucking House of Lords. How dare you kill it. I worked so hard. Oh, I definitely want to increase our manpower growth. Alright, Canadian Medical Association. Um, there we go. Oh, sweet. Uh, Anti-tank artillery, static anti-air, anti-air brigades... Why can't I... Oh, I see. Alright, let's look at some of our aircraft. Air transports, seaplane, escort fighters, interceptors, multi-role fighters... So let's just finish that research up. Take very long. All right, looking good. Man, I wonder when this first Canadian Infantry Division will ever be completed. Awesome! The Olympics begin. Go Canada! Yay! Well, at least it decreased our dissension, so there are some small rays of sunshine within this. Field Marshal, the new king is pursuing uh, or pressuring the Prime Minister to make a choice of who will lead the forces of Canada. We must choose wisely. If we choose a Cana Canadian man, this could risk alienating the exiles. We must all think, think about the future of Canada. This will not be easy. Ironside is the man for the job. Um, I don't know, I like the sound of Mr. Ironside, so you can't go wrong with a field marshal named Ironside. Alright, more events that decrease our descent rate. Oh no, oh man. Prince of Paradox is dead. Alright. 
Even after everything ends, so does the Olympics. We won gold and silver medals in yachting and athletics. Not saying about other disciplines, the British Empire, even after 1924, is still number one. We're number one, man. So, if you want to know where I live, um, provide the fund. Oh, what's this? Federation asks for our assistance. Yes, give them their funding. So, I used to live uh, about here. Uh, and now I live about here. Somewhere in this vague area. So, there you go. Or maybe about where the infantry division is set, is standing. So let's look, let's decide, what are we going to do in terms of our land doctrine? I think we're going to go for a firepower focus. I think it makes the most sense given, uh, you know, our, our lack of manpower, so we got to make every man count. Apparently not, because, uh... Apparently we don't have someone with training. Oh wait, never mind. It's up here. Okay. Founding the Atlantic Aeronautics Corporation. Yes, found it. Investing in Canadian industry. Of course we should invest in it. Canadian industry is important. Disturbances in the USA. Uh-oh. Here we go. Now things are getting heavy. Prime Minister King has anxiously observed the political developments concerning our American neighbors, and it is clear to him that a crisis is coming to a head. Recent political infighting concerning Bill C-7 has spent much of the government's political capital and preparations for shut, uh, showdown with the Union of Britain claim much of Canada's resources. But King feels something must be done. If the syndicist wins in the upcoming federal election, it is a terrible threat to our national security. Uh, security. But the America First movement is also highly unpredictable. The crisis is deepening. What should we do? I think we should send a letter to Hoover. We will support Hoover. Hooray. Oh yeah, that's the main thing that happens in, in America. That's the main sort of difference is that Herbert Hoover is president instead of uh, FDR. And, uh, well, we'll see how that goes. One of these days, we'll get back to 0% dissension. Man, Prime, I, I, as Prime Minister William Lloyd Mackenzie King, has had to take some, some tough stances. Yes, the 1st Canadian Infantry Division is good to go. Alright. Go Canada, go. Uh, and I'm going to focus in on, on building some... Uh, oops, no, that's not what I want. Gotta go to economy, gotta go to division, gotta go, and I'll beef them up. For the 
medium tank brigade. Let's also build a tank division. Or can we yet? No, it doesn't look like we can. Oh wait, um... Sure, Mountain Marines. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, well... I don't think we need so much in supplies right now. There we go. All right, new technology is completed. Um, what's next? Motorized infantry. Losing supplies daily. Oh well. Uh, the computer will deal with that and have because uh, we're trading away most of our supplies. All right, fire part. Firepower focus is done. And can we continue to increase our land doctrines? Yes, we can. All right, Mr. Ironside, your first test as a new field marshal to develop our new land doctrines. Funding, yes, form it. I'm going to go to uh, make sure they stockpile supplies. The U.S. hands power to the Army. General MacArthur has been entrusted with the safety of the United States government. Well, it seems uh, vainglorious, or he seems a vainglorious big heart. That's because he is. Uh, MacArthur will stamp out violent syndicism should it arise. While the Canadian government would have preferred de de uh, democratic transfer of power to a new civilian president had happened. We can rest easy. Uh, someone we can do business with is in power. MacArthur is a son of a bitch, but he is my kind of son of a bitch. Why would I want to boycott with the USA? Oh man, every time we're just about to decrease our industrial, our, our dissension a little bit, something else happens. Just looking at my, uh, Cyrus here. It looks like we're slowly getting back to balance with our supplies. Alright. That needed. Money to do that. Don't have enough money right now. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Whew, I almost thought we crashed. Oh, there we go. Shit's hitting the fan. Agrochemistry. 
Okay, so. Well, I'll talk about this just a little bit. Let me uh, get a new technology. Ready and ready to go. Let's go with new computers. So yeah, the Americans uh, start up another civil war, basically, is what happens. And uh, it's a bloody one. So we have the American Union State, led by Huey P. Long. And they're, you know, the America first, authoritarian Democrat uh, type of gentleman. And then we have the combined syndicates of America, which are the radical socialist state. So what happens here uh, is very, very key and can affect a large number of different outcomes. So we'll have to see the events that are, give, are given to us. American Civil War. All right, and the Pacific States of America have seceded. All right, the Canadian Defense Scheme. The defense scheme was designed to allow Canada to preemptively take territory in respect to Canadian defense with the 